This is Jonathan Agger, here for Crow Boxing fans. It's the media aftermath of Josh Warrington's technical draw with Maurizio Lara. Johnny Fisher joins me, heavyweight. Um, Johnny, what's your reaction to that? Uh, what a great atmosphere, electric atmosphere here. It's just disappointing how it ended, for not only for the fans, but for the two boxers who've obviously trained for weeks for this. And they're going to have to do it all, all over again because there's going to be an appetite for it, whether it's this year or next year, I don't know, but people want to see it. That 20,000 fans was just incredible, wasn't it? Yeah, it that was. atmosphere. The atmosphere, especially after everything that's gone on with the pandemic, is just unbelievable to it. that electric atmosphere. It just makes me hungry to want to fight as well now. Does that make you want to fight in a stadium like this? Yeah. Get I'd on to Sam? Fight here, fight in Wembley, uh, the Wembley uh, Olympic Stadium or Leighton Orient, something like that. That'd be brilliant. Even fighting in Romford Stadium in where I live, that'd be unbelievable as well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what's your standout uh, picks from the undercard? Um, Maxi Hughes, what a performance that was. Yeah. What a great performance. Uh, I think he won every round. How you, that's how you deal with a big puncher. Jab, slip out of the way, get your own shots off and don't stand in that pocket too much. And when he did catch him, I thought he did, he'd done what I would have done probably, which is just unload too much. But if he just relaxed a little bit and uh, get them ones and twos off and, and really make it work. But what a great performance it was. Talk about you. I uh, haven't spoken to you since your win at fight camp, stoppage win over Danny Whitaker. Yeah. How was it for you? Yeah, it was great. It was great. I put a lot of work in for that, me and Mark Tibbs. We trained like an eight or ten round fighter, which was brilliant. And um, Danny, it was a really nice bloke. Right after yeah, the fight, I saw you I embrace. Yeah, yeah. Really, really nice guy but when you're in there and you're fighting it's business and I can I'm a nice man I can I'm, I'm kind I'm, I'm a good person I like to believe but when it comes to fighting I've got that killer instinct and I can turn it on and turn it off I mean uh, you know you showed kill it fin kill it finishing instincts in there to get him out of there yeah. uh, how much if anything did you learn from that fight I learned a lot I learned um, a lot about my temperament and how I can calm down a little bit. Still got to pop that jab a bit better. I'm not really relying on my jab too much in a minute, but there will be that will become more into that will come more into play as I step up the level in opponents. But I am stepping up gradually because in your third fight to fight someone who's fought for a century area title and lost on a split decision, that's not a bad little step up. And as I keep going up now, there will be little tests as we go along the way, and my skills will have to come out even more. What's the uh, latest about when you're next out? End of October. Okay. So you can probably. Yeah, yeah. A bit of the hopefully. Over the is that's probably the, yeah. That's the plan. Uh, any idea who it might be against? There's a few names being being uh, thrown about. Um, my old mate Christopher Lovejoy. That'd be great to fight him at some point. I don't know if it'll be in October the 30th, but um, that might be something for afterwards. But I don't know who it'll be on the 30th of October. All I know is I've got to get in training. I'm in the gym and I'm working hard. I've got a touch on that. I saw the uh, little head-to-head -head thing you did uh, on the S Jam channel. Yeah. Um, tell me exactly what happened between you two, and <laughs> is that fight going to happen? Oh, it's got to happen. I want it to happen, and he wants it to happen. So it makes sense. Whether it happens in the next one or the next one after that, I don't know. But listen, Christopher Lovejoy. He's a good guy, he's not a bad guy, but we don't play boxing and when we get in the ring my job is to get rid of him and his job will be to get rid of me. So I've got to try to take it very seriously. We have a laugh and a joke, but my job is to get rid of someone like Christopher Lovejoy. I feel like that fight excites you because we spoke about it before your last fight, it does. Can fight and yeah, it's, it seems like one that's it could, it could be uh, you know quite a lot of interest for that. I've got a lot of interest. My, a lot of my supporters are always asking me whenever I whenever I go out where I live, people saying when you fight that Lovejoy, when you fight him, so it's getting people interested. So make it happen. Let's make it happen. Uh, Johnny, two fight predictions. Um, Joshua Usyk, yep. your your thoughts um, Listen, on how it goes. Both world class operators, Olympic gold medalists. Obviously, they're, they're great. They're great competitors. For me, the size and power advantage of Anthony Joshua will, will, will pay dividends in the rounds nine to twelve. That's my prediction. It'll stop him l late in the fight. But I've been wrong, and I could be wrong again. So Usyk, I hope he put, makes a fight of it, and he will because he's a world-class operator as well. Final one: Canelo Plant, November sixth. Canelo stoppage. Round six. There you have it. There you go. Double lively, Johnny Fisher. Double lively. Appreciate Plant. your time.